Nitin, tell me a little bit about the Emphasis mission. Uh, I think it's a, it's a very interesting point in the life of enterprises. Uh, if you've been a business that's been around for more than 25 years, then by definition, I think you're going through a pretty rapid and unexpected in some senses, uh, you know, assault on your business model. Uh, think of any large enterprise, bank, insurance company, travel company, right? They've used technology for the last 50 years in essentially helping them run their business at scale, bringing efficiency in, automating a manual process. You know, you went from actually having manual ledgers in the bank to having a general ledger system. You went from having manual policy registers to having a policy system for an insurance company and so on. But I think that era of technology was very different because you were, you were really using it to automate your back office and it became the backbone of your business. But it wasn't really meant for anything but just that. As we've seen this revolution coming out of the smartphone adoption and the fact that everything in the world has been appified and you expect consumption from consumers to actually happen through the digital app, I think it's put a lot of pressure on, on business models for a lot of companies. And number one reason is back office doesn't differentiate you from me as two consumers. But the new age companies, especially the, the ones that started in the last 15, 20 years, or the ones that built models around data, actually differentiate you and me in a native manner. Right? So yeah. when you log into Netflix, it knows who you are, yeah. it knows who I am. Amazon Prime is a great example of a personalization engine. So Emphasis mission really is, how can we take enterprises and help them actually adopt technology by applying all that's now available in the modern technology domain and getting them closer to their end consumers. So the, the, ne the Netflix uh, highly evolved, uber personalized approach, but say for FinTech? For traditional banks. Yeah, all right, right? Okay. For traditional insurance yeah. companies, right? Because the way consumer expectations have moved, especially in the last five, seven years, I think there's a, there's a little bit of work to be done in keeping them relevant to those consumers. Think of, of the Gen Z consumer, as we call them, right? Um, kids at home. I don't see them going to the branch. I don't see them go, even logging onto the internet website. If they can't do it in two taps, they won't do it. Right? So I think it's a whole different consumption of, of the services. The patterns changed, and traditional enterprises need a lot of help in making that pivot. I mean, we, we have a saying at Emphasis that every business is a digital business. Some just don't know it yet. So can we actually be the provider of that smart software that powers everybody's business? Can we be the driver in the driverless car for every enterprise which basically means, can we give you the smart software you need to run your business and, and make the What make are the, the key challenges? I mean, you mentioned the, the, the traditional bank example and the fact that uh, kind of millennials don't expect to, to click more than two or three times. How do you get around the glaringly obvious issues like, like security and so on? Yeah, I think... Uh, and make that process seamless absolutely. So and Absolutely. So think of what's happened in the way enterprises consumed technology. Right. They were consuming technology in these giant back office systems that happened to be inside your four walls in something called the data center, which was nothing but a source of scalable computing power. And then, of course, you build bells and whistles around it with you know, storage and networks and security and everything else. But since everything was within your four walls, you had the sense that it was more secure until, of course, you started connecting everything to the internet. Right? So if you now start looking at the way technology consumption is becoming available, you know, uh, Microsoft has a great saying that they democratize consumption of computing power. Now they're saying they want to democratize the consumption of artificial intelligence. Right? What that really means is what used to be in the domain of a few select people who could afford it has become available to the masses. Hence, you don't really need to have this large, giant investment in a data center. You can actually plug and you can play. You can tap into compute power on, on demand, which is called cloud. Yeah. Inherently, it's, like, it's an industrial scale utility that has been created, and I think the security features of that utility are far superior than what any one enterprise could afford, because we've collectively actually invested in building that security. So I think in, in, in itself, there are many other challenges besides security. I think the biggest challenge really is the, is the way the systems have been built over the last 50 years isn't really the way you need them to perform. So how do you make that shift from where you were to where you need to be? And that's where I think we have to come in. And, and the way you do it is by, by intermediating between consumer and the core by putting some data and analytics driven intelligence. So your, your magic dust isn't recreating the wheel, you're actually applying other people's technology. Absolutely. Well, in our, an our, way. Think of us as, as somebody who brings all of it together. Yeah. Right? You know, in the olden days, you would go to a bank and, and they would look for a technology partner and say, well, this is my problem, can you find me a solution? Right? Unfortunately, today they don't know what the problem is. Because there's so many problems to solve, how do you prioritize? How do you make sure that you're able to impact 
the end consumer. So can we put the customer in the middle and work everything backwards from it versus having the back office in the middle and working backwards for the customer? So I think that's the big shift or a 180 degree switch that we are, we are looking at, at helping our clients make. And, and that to me is really all about taking this applied technology mindset, not necessarily having to reinvent the wheel, not necessarily having to junk everything you've got, and, but how do you sweat the assets that you already have and yet give the end consumer the experience and the personalization is expecting. So, not getting too specific, but there's one example at the launch here today that, that has blown my mind. Mm -hmm. I think you know which, which one it is. Uh, it's not actually the um, uh, augmented reality trader application, which in itself is absolutely extraordinary. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's, it's AutoCode, which, which for me really is the, is the sort of concretization of something that I've suspected is about to arrive, and there it is. It's the auto coding sure. website. So just to flesh it out, you've got a white piece of paper, you draw out effectively what you want, what forms you want, where, where you want your logo and your picture and your bio and your about section and your navigable buttons and so on. And then within a matter of seconds, uh, your magic solution auto code automatically codes the whole thing into HTML. Yeah, I think. Uh Firstly, uh, this is a great example of applying what's available in open domain, open source, to a very specific problem. And I don't mean to say that AutoCode can't do more, or, but I also don't want you to think that it's the end of programming, because I think you know, it's, uh, it's an example of how do you apply machine learning, but at the same time, you're trying to solve one particular problem, and that problem is called agility. How do you give an, a traditional enterprise the likes I talked about the agility to be able to actually launch product sooner. So think of this as you want to launch a new product, you do a brainstorming session in a, in a conference room, you got all these whiteboard ideas, you eventually prioritize and said, phase one, this is what we need to do, phase two, this is what we need to do. Before you leave the room, you actually see what you're going to build. That is really how we built AutoCode. Of course, it has many other applications, but the first application really was, can we give more agility to what we call rapid prototyping? So you don't spend the next three months building a prototype that you don't like. But you, you, what you've got is the, you know, the, the sort of AI equivalent of a, of a 3D printer. It, it's that game changing. It, it is, uh, of course, there are many other applications and interesting ones, right? If I can automatically generate the code of an app, I don't need to have the same look and feel of, of the app. You log onto an app, it senses your mood based on emotion detection, and it changes itself. Because at the back of it, you know, code's being changed automatically. So I think, Think of the application for that in a retail context, right? Offers depend on location, mood, time of the day. Uh, so I think there are multiple applications for it. Uh, the idea really is can we accelerate the process of developing functionality? Can we, can we give agility to, to traditional enterprises so they can actually keep up with consumer expectations? So we've got Trader Lens, we've got AutoCode. Uh, you just moved into Europe, you've got a base down in, in France. It's big change for you. What, where do you expect to be in five years' time? I think. Uh, what excites me about where we are is the unique intersection of old, new, and application of everything that, that is now possible. Uh, the way technology is evolving, it's very difficult to say what, what may be possible in five years from now, but I think what we continue to expect to do is, is, is keep our clients extremely relevant to their consumers. And if you keep doing that, I think we have a great future ahead of us. Listen, thank you very much. Thank you so much.